Welcome to another episode of The U. My name is Robert Whitaker. Today, I'm going to teach you how to easily create a Linux VM on your PC. So there once was a time I was brand new to automation. What I found out quickly is a lot of the automation tools are not able to run natively on Windows. So for example, I tried to install PyATS on Windows. I got an error. When I investigated that error, I found out that PyATS is not supported to run directly on Windows. I also tried installing Ansible, but I quickly discovered that Ansible does not run on Windows natively. So when I was starting with automation, it was a little frustrating. Uh, if I wanted to work with PyATS and Ansible, I couldn't do it locally from my PC. I typically would have to like hunt down like an available Linux server, or maybe I would spin up a Linux VM from scratch, but this was like a very time consuming process to go through. So I found a solution to the problem I wanna share with you. You can use something referred to as Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, also known as WSL2, and you can literally create a Linux VM on your PC within just a few minutes. So the way WSL works is you install WSL on your PC. Once you install it, you can then simply run a command to spin up a Linux VM. So we're going to create a Linux VM on my PC in five simple steps. Uh, step number one, I'm going to make sure virtualization is enabled on my PC. Uh, step number two, I'm then going to install virtual machine platform. Step number three, I'm going to run a WSL command to create a Linux VM. Step number four, from within my Linux VM, I'm going to make some tweaks to make sure my Linux VM can resolve domain names. And then step number five, inside of my Linux VM, I'm then going to install the automation tool that I want to use. So for step number one, we need to go into the task manager. To get into the task manager, you can right click your taskbar and open up task manager from there. I click on this little button right here, which says performance. And if I go down to the bottom, Notice it says virtualization is enabled. So if virtualization is not enabled, uh, you'll need to boot into BIOS and enable the virtualization technology option. So for example, if you have an HP laptop, you could just Google something like HP enable virtualization in BIOS. You hit enter and then bam, it gives you the exact steps you need to go through to enable virtualization. So now that we confirm that virtualization is enabled on my PC, I'm going to type a WSL command to install something called Virtual Machine Platform. All right, so a few important points about step number two. Uh, first, Virtual Machine Platform got installed. So notice here, when I went into step number two, Ubuntu actually got installed for me automatically. Really, really cool stuff. And then finally, after the install, it's saying, hey, I need to reboot my system. So I'm gonna go ahead and reboot my system. I will be right back. All right, I rebooted my machine. Uh, we're gonna now move on to step number three. All I'm gonna do in step number three is I'm gonna run the exact same command that I ran in step number two, but this time it's gonna create a virtual machine for me. So it's creating the VM. And now it's prompting me for a username. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a password for my Linux VM. Boom, there we go. I am now in a Linux VM inside my PC. Notice we're running Ubuntu 22.04.2. So we're gonna move on to step number four. We're going to need this Linux VM to be able to resolve domain names. So I can ping public IP addresses, but if I actually try to ping a domain name like google.com, it's not able to resolve to the IP address. So to resolve the issue, we would point our Linux VM to a name server, and then we should be able to resolve domain names. But there's actually an issue with Linux and WSL. If I was to reboot the Linux VM, the name server configuration gets deleted from the Linux VM. So I'd have to go back into my Linux VM and point it to the correct name server again. And these commands right here are the solution to our problem. From a high level, what these commands do is it points you to a name server in the resolve.com file. Uh, but on top of that, what it also does is it changes the attributes of the resolve.com file to make the configurations inside of the file persist when that Linux VM reboots. So all we're gonna do is take these commands, I'm gonna copy them to my clipboard, and I paste them into my Linux VM. I hit enter, prompts me for my password. All right, and there we go. So let's take a look at the resolve.com file. Let's make sure it points to the correct name server. We can see it points to 8888. Let's try to ping google.com. 
we can ping google.com. So when you set this up, you'll need to copy and paste these commands into your Linux VM. I'll make sure to include a link to this forum or the commands either in the video notes or in the comments. All right, very cool guys. So we now have a Linux VM in just a few minutes. Now what we can do is start to use some of the automation tools that are not compatible to run directly on my PC. So that's gonna take us to step number five, where we can install and use an automation tool. So we can really install whatever we want to inside of here. Maybe we wanna install pip or pyats. I'm gonna install Ansible. First, I'll run sudo apt-get update. Let's clear the screen. Now I'm gonna run the command to download and install Ansible. I'll hit yes to continue. And there we go, Ansible's installed. All right, very cool guys. We have a Linux VM, we got Ansible running inside of it. Now, maybe we wanna actually create like an Ansible playbook. So I'm gonna run, from my Linux VM, I'm gonna run code play.yaml. I hit enter. So I open the file by running the code command on my Linux VM, but notice here, the file actually opens up on Visual Studio Code on my Windows machine. But here's the cool thing. I can cr edit and create the playbook from Visual Studio Code on my Windows machine. But when I save it, it's actually gonna save to the file system within my Linux VM. So I just wrote a very simple playbook. All it's going to do is when I run this playbook on my Linux VM, it's just gonna simply print out a message, hello world, that's it. So I'm gonna save the file. So if I go back to my Linux VM and I type the ls command, I can see that play.yaml file that I just edited on my Windows machine is actually saved into the Linux VM's file system. I can also look at the contents of the play.yaml file and notice it has all of my YAML data in there needed to execute the playbook. Now what I'm gonna do is try to run the playbook. Boom, there we go. So I ran the playbook, notice it printed out, hello world. So one of the things you can do now that you have a Linux VM is you can actually go to Cisco University at u.cisco.com. You can actually go through these really cool labs that are referred to as tutorials. Uh, to get to tutorials, you wanna hit, click the explore button. We're gonna scroll down and then on the left hand side, we're gonna check this box, tutorials. And there's all these different labs. So there's like Ansible labs, there's PyATS labs, or also known as tutorials, and they require Linux. You can now go through these tutorials for free. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you're gonna use your Linux VM for. Maybe you're gonna use it for PyATS, Ansible, or maybe you have some other use case. Also, if you like this video and wanna see more of these videos in the future, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I hope you found this useful and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video.